amigos. Bienvenidos a Barney's America Latina. Arriba, arriba, it's showtime. Let me introduce you to a crazy carnival of creatures, from fabulously freaky frogs, to hollering howler monkeys, to manic meat-eating plants. It's magnifico! And what's more, they're all connected to each other in this wonderful world of wildlife by funny, fabulous and fantastic facts. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Tres, dos, uno, es la hora de Barney's Latin America. I'm practicing my catwalk poses. What do you think? Pa. Should I wear my hair like this? Or like that? I think you should uh, cover it up. Okay. Red shoes, blue shoes. <laughs> Why don't you just wear both? Barney, you don't normally pay this much attention to your appearance. What's got into you? Haven't you heard? It's Amazon Fashion Week. Yeah, well, I don't think you stand a chance against these guys. Judging their stuff on the catwalk today will be some of Latin America's hottest supermodels. The fabulous McCaws with their funky feathers. Modelling the latest designer footwear will have the blue-footed boobies. And they'll be effortless chic from our shaggy-coated red-faced Wakari monkey. So, shift over. Paris, London and New York. Latin America is where it's at. OK, taking to the catwalk first, or should that be frog walk, it's the poison arrow frogs. Wow, they're tiny. They surely are. Smaller than your little finger, in fact. Titchy they may be, but shy they are not. Our frogs are modelling some of the most eye-catching colours of any animal on the planet. Yeah, they definitely like to stand out from the crowd. That one has gone for an explosive colour palette of yellows, black and blues. And this funky fellow has chosen a dark brown background with fluorescent green Go Faster stripes. Yeah, darlings, this is my favourite outfit. I live in it. Cool colours to wear to a party, but don't they ever feel like wearing something a little more understated? Well, there's actually a good reason they're so colourful. What, because they want to look cooler and more glamorous than the other boring green frogs? Watch it. No, actually, their colours are a warning, telling other animals to keep well away. I think I'll have some frog today. You want a piece of me? Oh, no, I didn't think they look awful. Believe it or not, these tiny frogs are some of the deadliest, most poisonous animals in the world. What? A tiny little frog like that couldn't hurt a fly. Want a bet? One frog has enough poison to kill 20,000 mice. 20,000 mice? Yeah, and the poison's in the skin. Uh, it's probably best you don't touch me, just to be on the safe side. And what's more, locals who live in the rainforest tip their hunting arrows with the frog's deadly poison. Wow, what mind-blowing models to start our fashion parade. Launching our creature catwalk, the deadly fashionable frogs. Taking to the creature catwalk next, we've got the magnificent macaws. Oh, 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 their colours are really bright, even brighter than the poison arrow frogs. That must mean these guys are deadly, dangerously poisonous. No, macaws are poisonous. Well, they certainly like to get themselves spotted with those bright colours. Actually, believe it or not, their colours act as camouflage. Now you see me, now you don't. Camouflage? Now you see me! You're having a laugh. It looks like these macaws have been splashed with bright paint. Anyone can spot them a mile off. Nope. The colours might stand out to you and me, but they actually blend in really well with the blue sky, bright sunlight and jungle colours, so predators find it harder to spot them. Oh, I'm sure I saw a pad around here somewhere. There was one over here. Oh, over there. Oh, no, I don't know. Wow, that's clever. But the fancy feathered macaws do use their bright colours to attract attention when they want it. Hello, my darling. Hello. I love your feathers. Why? I think they're beautiful. Oh, no, I tied them myself. Hang on a minute, what's going on here? Barrett's are having a party, cool. Everyone's turned out in their best party feathers. Look at them eyeing each other up. Hello, my name's Neville. I like your feathers. Where'd you get them from? At uh, McCall's and Spencer's, in a sale. He's hot. Fancy her with a big beak. Well, excuse me, Mr. Flirty. Oh, look out. Uh-oh, here come the gate crashes. Quick, let's get out of here. Arriba! Ah, oh, the party's over. 
Yeah, but what a great place to pick up a bird. I reckon he only fancied it because of her feathers. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. But they'll stay together forever now. Hey, you've got to agree, that's one heck of a wedding outfit. So our loved up fancy feathered macaws are linked to our poison arrow frogs because they both use their colours to signal to other animals. Next up on our creature catwalk, it's the magnificent boobies. The hoobies? The boobies. They're a type of bird. Oh yes, that's right. And I'm supposed to be introducing them. Well, get on with it then. Okay. Boobies live in large groups along the coast of Latin America, and you don't need me to tell you why these guys are on the catwalk. Um, Barney? Yeah? What? I got myself a pair of blue feet, Gem. They're all the rage, you know. Hang on a minute. So, first of all, it's one red trainer and one blue trainer, and our blue feet. Do you know what? I won't ask. Boobies wave their blue feet around to try to attract a mate. Look, the higher he lifts his feet, the better chance he's got of finding a lady. And the bluer your feet, the healthier and more fit you're supposed to be. Hey, look, that booby's got limited edition red feet. Yeah, but it's the blue feet which have really caught on. Hey, but I guess you don't know why they're called boobies. No idea. The word booby comes from the Spanish word bobo, which means stupid. Hang on, wait a minute, wait a minute. Does this bird's name literally mean stupid? Yeah. Can't see why. <laughs> they do look a bit funny when they're landing, don't they? Great footbrake action there. Well, if you've got funky feet, why not flaunt them? That's what I say. And our foot-waggling boobies are linked to our magnificent macaws because their coloured feet and feathers are both signs of good health. Why don't you uh, lose the booby feet whilst I introduce the next animal? Yeah, good idea. Anyway, I can beat your clumsy blue feet. Feast your eyes on these killer heels. Aren't they gorgeous? Yeah, but Jem, you can hardly walk in them. I'm telling you, big, flat-footed blue feet are the way forward. Those heels are never going to catch on. Want to bet? Check out our next Amazon supermodel. She's got the poise, she's got the looks. She's definitely got the legs. What is she? She a fox in high heels? Exactly. Her nickname is Red Fox on Stilts because she looks like a very tall fox. But she's actually a maned wolf. And I think she's the perfect model on our creature catwalk. Well, what's the need for a wolf to have such long legs? Well, she spends most of her time living in grasslands, so her long legs mean she can prance effortlessly through the grass. And her height also means she can easily spot little animals living in the long grass to eat. I'm a rock, I'm a rock. <laughs> I tell you what, that girl's got style. Not only does she move elegantly, she dresses elegantly too. Check out her black stockings, her white tipped tail and her pointy ears. She's also got her own brand of perfume. A wolf that wears perfume? Yep, she has a smelly body odour which has earned her the nickname Skunk Wolf. Uh, I think she heard you, Gem. Hey, Skunk Wolf, is your perfume called Eau de Poo? Barney! <laughs> Well, if you like that, I'll let you in on another fact. Guess how these wolves communicate? Uh, earwax. Nope, with their wee. They spray their wee around to show other wolves the location of a certain hunting path or to mark the place where they've left prey. So, she's got two brands of perfume, Eau de Poo and Eau de Wee. I wonder if it'll catch on. And some people think she has magical powers. If you find a maned wolf tooth and keep it, it's said to stop you from needing to go to the dentist. But her most outstanding features are her red fur and long legs. Well, she's definitely our tallest model yet, but how are we going to link her back to our blue-footed boobies? Good question. Our elegant maned wolf is linked to our blue-footed boobies as they both got fancy feet. The maned wolf has black stockings while our boobies just have, well, blue feet. So cue our next creature on the catwalk. You, monkey boy, I said cue. Whatever it is, it's too busy staring at its own reflection. Ah, there we go. Whoa, what happened to that monkey's face? It looks as though it's got carried away with the old blusher. You got a problem with that, love, have you? Coming around here, casting your aspersions. 
Well, he's called a Wakari monkey, but his nickname is the English monkey because he looks a little bit like a bald Englishman who's been out in the sun too long. Unbelievable! Good grief, it really does look like a human's head on an animal's body. We should try using some Factor 50. Jeremy's yeah, not really sunburned. Really? Is he just embarrassed to be on telly then? No, his red face is naturally like that. The healthier he is, the redder his face, and the more girls he gets. And look at these big boys all stuffing their faces. Yeah, they're trying to find the best fruits and berries to eat to keep them fit and healthy. That way, they'll get the reddest faces and attract the prettiest girls. If there is such a thing. Well, I'm redder than you. No, I'm the reddest. You're pink, not red. It's wedding song. It's a girl's colour. You are a girl. Anyway, I'll come in there. The monkeys find all the food they need in the trees, so they don't need to swim in the flooded forest below. Yeah, because they don't want their makeup to run. Don't you not stop. I'm out of here. So, our red-faced Wakari monkey has developed long, lanky limbs for swinging through the trees, while our maned wolf has long, lanky limbs for prancing through tall grass. Am I sensing a colour theme here? We've got blue-footed boobies, red-faced monkeys. I suppose next we'll be telling them we have animals that are red all over. Well, yes, we do. See if you can spot it. OK, there's something red there. Nah, that's not it. Uh, give over. Ooh, look, a vulture with a red head. Oh, well, that's got to be it. That's it. Yep, definitely. Nah. Ah, there we go. Yep, the Scarlet Ibis. Scarlet by name and Scarlet by nature, except for one tiny bit of its feathers which aren't red. See if you can spot them. Uh, its head. Yeah, that's not very red. Nope, its head feathers might be slightly lighter, but they've still got a reddish tinge. Uh, its eyes? No, eyes don't count. Keep watching and shout when you see the bit of the bird that isn't red. Now, our Skylar Ibis was spotted by our model scouts wading through the swamps of Latin America. Well, she's not that good looking. Look, her head's covered in mud. Yeah, but she shows real potential. Her long, slender legs, downward curving beak, and perfect catwalk strut appeal to our model spotters immediately. Yeah, and I guess with the fiery red feathers, she's bound to be great on the covers of wildlife magazines all over the world in no time. And her eye catching red feathers have made her the hottest thing since Kate Moth. <laughs> Never London luck. Oh, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on a bit. Rewind that, please. I think I've just spotted which bit of her feathers aren't red. The tips of her wings. Exactly. The Scarlet Ibis is red all over, except for black tips on her wings. Apart from these, though, she's a complete redhead. Yeah, but is she a natural redhead? Well, no. <gasps> what? Can't believe it. It's out of a bottle, innit? Well, she's not exactly a fake, but the chicks actually start off grey. Ooh, that is an ugly duck thing. Yeah, but as they grow up, they turn red because of the food they eat. Pardon? The food they eat makes their feathers change colour? Yeah, she uses her long bill to fish out pink shrimps and red crabs. The colour from the crabs and shrimps turn her feathers bright red. Wow, imagine if we all turned the same colour as the food we ate. <laughs> yeah, your mum would always know if you'd taken a biscuit from the biscuit tin without asking. Well, it's no wonder these babies are so desperate to get food. They can't wait to eat millions of little red crabs and shrimps so their feathers turn red. Get a mouthful of like that down your beak, love. Wait, that's fine. Well, even I can guess, Jem, what the link back to the Wakari monkey is going to be for this one. They are both redheads. Exactly. Just like the Wakari monkey, our Skylar Ibis is a huge fan of the colour red. So that's the end of our red collection and a perfect place for a recap of our creature cap. Hopping onto our creature catwalk first today, we have the deadly fashionable poison arrow frog. Cool, darling! But the macaws were undeterred by the toxic frogs and they fluttered fearlessly onto the catwalk. They're linked to the frogs because they both use their bright colours to signal to each other. And our third model, the blue-footed boobies. Just like the macaws, their colour is a sign of good health and helps to attract a mate. Our elegant maned wolf strutted her stuff in a pair of black silky stockings. She's linked to the blue-footed boobies because they've both got fancy feet. Swinging onto the catwalk next was the red-faced Wakari monkey. Just like the main wolf, the Wakari also has long, agile limbs. And linked to the Wakari monkey was the Scarlet Ibis. She's also a massive fan of the colour red and gets her red feathers because of all the red crabs and shrimps she eats. Not all animals can be as beautiful as our Scarlet Ibis. Yes, we've had all sorts of letters in from animals who are desperate for some help in the looks department. So, we decided to choose one animal that could really do with and 
Extreme Makeover. Extreme Makeover. The letter that really caught our eye came from this caterpillar. He says he's tired of looking like a hairy little worm, and other animals avoid him because of the perfume he wears. Perfume? He releases a stinky ooze. Well, no wonder he's got no friends. So he'd like a complete change of image. And as it's Amazon Fashion Week, we just couldn't say no to this poor little blighter. Our Amazon star guru is set to work a couple of weeks ago to give him an extreme makeover. Extreme makeover. First, they chose a safe leaf. Then they wrapped him up in a tight cocoon with loads of silk thread. It's called a chrysalis. Yeah, not too tight. They left him there for about two weeks. And during that time, he got bigger and bigger. And now, love on air, we're about to reveal the results of our caterpillar's extreme, extreme makeover. makeover. I like that <laughs> but before we do, let us see a little reminder of how our caterpillar looked before its transformation. He really wasn't a happy caterpillar. Now, he didn't like his clashing colour scheme and was constantly having a bad hair day. He just wanted to curl up and go to sleep. But after two weeks in the chrysalis, it's time for the results! Oh, here, where's the door? I can't find the door. Oh, it's dark in here. Oh, hey, what's this? Ah, hey, that's better! Oh, and wow, really, just look at the difference! He's completely changed shape from a hairy colour clashing caterpillar into a beautiful blue morpho butterfly. Yeah, it's one of the biggest butterflies in the world, in fact. So, what do you think's your new look? We love it! Our biggest family aren't going to recognise him after that transformation. Well, he's still kept the brown caterpillar colour on the underside of his wings. And what are those spots? Well, they're designed to look like fake eyes. They're to camouflage the butterfly and confuse predators. Even hell, I don't eat butterflies. And he's got this bold blue colour on the outside of his wings. He can really carry it off. He looks so elegant. Oh, and look how when he flies, the blue on the wings <laughs> shimmers and changes with direction of the light. That's called iridescent. Oh! What a big word! What's this iridescent? Well, the butterfly's wings are covered in lots of layers of teeny-weeny little scales. As the butterfly flies, the scale reflects the light and makes the wing look shiny. From gawky teenage caterpillar to drop-dead gorgeous butterfly, it just goes to show that wearing the right colours can make all the difference. Ah, oh, I love happy endings. <laughs> ah, OK, <clears throat> moving on. And so our blue morpho butterfly is linked to the scarlet ibis as they both change colour when they grow up. Nice one. Hey, up! how did this one make it onto our creature catwalk? Looks like an old man with a squished face. Sorry, did somebody say something? It's not all about good looks, Barney. It's as much about individuality. Well, our sloth's definitely got that. <laughs> Too right. Our sloth is modelling one of this season's must-have shaggy fur coats. It's understated, effortless chic in a fetching brown colour. Brown? I'd say it's got more of a tinge of green. Ah, uh, yeah. That'll be algae growing on its fur. Algae? <laughs> yeah. Our sloth likes to lead a quiet life and it actually can't really be bothered to groom itself. Well, would you? So algae starts to grow on its fur, turning it slightly green. Weird. Weird, yes, but clever too, because the green algae helps camouflage the sloth. Ah, now you're talking. Looks like he's got an itchy fur coat. <laughs> That'd be the moths living in it. Hey, I'm sick of you guys being around here, man. No picture. Uh, moths, what's wrong with this guy? Well, the moths feed off the algae. Can't believe you can't leave the guy in peace. I'm out of here. I just can't believe this, Jen. You're telling me that he's covered in algae and now he's got moths as well? Yep. I guess it's his equivalent to nits and dandruff. You speak for yourself, young lady. Wow, what a charmer. Because our sloth spent so long hanging upside down, its fur grows the opposite way to the fur on other animals. So, when it rains, the water will trickle off its coat. So, it's a back-to-front fur coat with moths and algae. It really takes fashion to another level. It does. And it also links us nicely back to the blue morpho butterfly. Both the sloth and the butterfly have clever camouflage. Right then, time to ramp it up a bit with a trip to the Funky Monkey Hair Salon. These guys love nothing more than a spot of pampering. Oh, look at them. They have pretty interesting haircuts. 
Yeah, they're golden lion tamarinds. Not hard to see why with that ring of hair around their faces like a lion's mane. Yeah, and I'm just as brave as a lion too. <laughs> oh, I lost my note. And when they're not foraging for fruits and berries to eat, these guys like to sit back, relax and groom each other. Ooh, when was the last time you had a wash? So why do they groom each other? I prefer to brush my own hair, thank you very much. Well, it's a good way of making friends and spending quality time with family. Oh, and getting rid of nits. Short back and sides. Crew cut here, I think. Nits? Not another one. Crikey, Nigel. They're everywhere. First the sloth with its moss, and now these guys. I thought you said this was a funky monkey hair salon. There's nothing funky about nits. They just make you itch like crazy. Lots of monkeys have nits, Jen. And because they can't wash or comb their hair, a trip to Funky Monkeys for a nit picking session is the best way to keep their hair clean and tidy. Ooh, just there. That's it. This is alive. <laughs> Look at that one. He's got a huge curly moustache. Yeah, he's cool. He's the Emperor Tamarin. He's gone for the classic handlebar moustache. And all these monkeys have nits? Yep. Which nicely links the tamarinds back to the sloth, as they had creatures living in their fur too. Ew. Okay, next up. Uh, uh, where are you? Ah, there you are. Look at my thumb not picking this. Jen, we've got a right diva here. Modelling our winter collection, we have the chinchilla. Uh, try to stay in frame, will you please? Our chinchilla is a type of rodent who lives high in the Andes Mountains. Now, temperatures in the Andes can drop well below freezing at night. So, our chinchilla can get a little chinchilly. <laughs> Sorry, but that is why he's modelling a fur coat. The chinchilla's got some of the softest, thickest fur of any animal. What, thicker than your hair? Yep. On a human head, there are thousands of different holes called follicles. One hair grows out of each follicle, but on a chinchilla, 60 hairs grow out of each follicle. Ah, it's good for cold nights, but what about during the day when the sun comes out? The chinchilla can't just take its coat off, can it? Well, you're right. When humans get hot, they cool themselves down by sweating water out through their skin. But chinchillas don't sweat because it would take too long for their fur to dry out again. Well, if they can't sweat, that means they might overheat, and that means they'll get heat stroke and die! And all because they can't take their ridiculously thick coat off. All right, Barney, calm down, calm down. The chinchilla has a solution. They root their blood to their large ears and lose heat that way. So, if you ever see a chinchilla with red ears, you know he's hot and has sent his blood to his ears to cool himself down. Ah, cool. I mean hot. Well, I mean, well, you know what I mean. I bet it takes a lot of work to keep such a thick fur coat clean, though. Yep, but our chinchilla doesn't take a bath with water like we would because his coat would take too long to dry out. Instead, he takes a bath in dust. Bathing in dust? Well, that's going to make him even more dirty. Nope. The dust gets into the fur and soaks up the oil and dirt. Ah, that's clever. And what's more, the chinchilla can release its fur, so it can escape from predators like owls or foxes, leaving them with nothing more than a mouthful of hair. So the chinchilla is linked to our tamarind monkey as they both have interesting ways of keeping clean. OK, our final model marching onto our creature catwalk is the three-banded armadillo. It looks like it's wearing a suit of armour. Yeah, it's her military look. Created by a hard keratin shell, made from the same stuff as your fingernails. The design even continues onto her tail. Stop looking at my bottom. She must be well protected from predators with all that armour. Yeah, well, she needs it because she can't see very well. Is anybody there? Where are you? She has to rely on her nose to smell danger. Danger? What? What? That's a funny walk. It looks like she's walking on tiptoe. Is she trying to sneak up on someone? I know. She has to walk like that because of her long claws. It's all part of her look. And they do come in handy for digging, too. Well, she's certainly not shy. See her fluttering her eyelashes there? Hello, Barney. Oh, she's coming up for a close-up again. This gal loves the camera. Ah, oh, great view of her belly, but slightly hairy, which isn't so attractive. A girl with a hairy belly? Uh, well, I don't know. So, does our armadillo like to carry a sword and shield? I mean, she might as well accessorise a suit of armour. No, because she's actually got another special way of protecting herself. Ah, she rolls herself up into a ball like a hedgehog. Na 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 na. 
Yeah, it protects her soft designer underbelly as well as her eyes and ears. Look, you can just see her tiny nose poking out. All clear. Oh, 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 this silly outfit. I'm stuck. <laughs> oh, that's much better. What a great way to protect itself. It's no wonder our armadillo is linked back to our chinchilla because they both have unique defence mechanisms. That's the end of our creature catwalk and just time for a final parade from all our models. First up was our toxic poison arrow frogs. With their luminous colours they stand well ahead of the game in the fashion stakes. Our beautiful macaws are linked to the frog as they both use their bright colours for signalling. My favourites, the blue-footed boobies, are linked to the macaws as their bright colours are a sign of good health and a sure way to find a mate. Fancy feet connect our long-legged maned wolf to the blue-footed boobies. Yeah, and long limbs were also the way forward for our red-faced wakari monkey. I do hope it'll be a while before his look catches on. Linked to the Wakari by the colour red, the Scarlet Ibis went for a complete head-to-toe red outfit. And just like the Ibis, the blue Morpho Caterpillar changed colour as he grew up into a stunning butterfly. He did look happier after his extreme makeover. Extreme makeover! And the Sloth is linked to the blue Morpho Butterfly as it uses colour as camouflage because of the, um, well, algae. <laughs> like the Sloth, the Tamarind Monkey also had a fur coat full of little creatures. Nits. He spends hours in the monkey grooming parlour trying to get rid of them all. The Chinchilla is linked to the Tamarind Monkey as he also has a unique way of keeping clean, bathing in dust. Finally, our three-banded armadillo was wearing a military-inspired design and linked to the chinchilla as they both have an excellent defence mechanism. And the armadillo also links all the way back to the poison arrow frogs who had another top defence mechanism, poison. A great show of regular-sized models there. I'm pleased to say, not a stick and set or a skinny model in sight. And that's it from Amazon Fashion Week. We've been invited to a very fabulous after-show party with the macaws, haven't we, Gem? Oh, yeah. Hurry up! The party's starting! Can't decide what I should wear. Should I wear my tambourine monkey moustache or my sloth outfit? Well, the parrots tend to hold their parties on rock faces, so probably better off with something like this. Oh, Jem, that is so last season.